Hello and welcome to another episode of the Duct Tape Marketing Podcast. This is John Jance. My guest today is Stefan Spencer. He's an SEO expert, founder of the interactive agency Net Concepts, and best-selling author, serial entrepreneur, life hacker, podcaster, and contributor to Harvard Business Review and Adweek. He also hosts his own podcast, in fact, two podcast shows, Get Yourself Optimized and Marketing Speak. He's the author of three books, including one we're going to talk about today that is now in its fourth edition, The Art of SEO, Mastering Search Engine Optimization. So, Stephen, or Stefan, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. I have a brother that spells his name that way, but it's Stephen. So, you know, forgive me if I say it wrong. It happens all the time. <laughs> I bet it does. So... I guess if there's a need for a fourth edition of a book as big as The Art of SEO, it must be mean that some things keep changing. So what are the highlights? Okay. We'll we'll drill down into them, but what are some of the highlights of uh, this new edition? Yeah, it was so much. I mean, it was a, pretty much a rewrite from the bottom up. So actually, the previous edition, the third edition, was a 1,000 pages. And yeah, so we had to cut down quite a lot because the more – material in a book, the fewer copies that sell, it gets a little bit ridiculous. Who yeah. wants to read a thousand page book, right? Yeah. <laughs> so there's a whole chapter now on AI that w right, wasn't right, right. present in the third edition. And that's using LLMs, generative AI to create everything from keyword strategies and processing your keyword lists into different kinds of use cases, categorizing and grouping keywords together, everything like that, to doing the more technical stuff like <clears throat> writing blocks of hreflang tags. I'm getting a little geeky here. I don't want to make this uh, full of acronyms and, and buzzwords and so forth, but there's a lot of technical stuff that you can do the heavy lifting using AI yeah. now yeah. and not you know, have to do it the old fashioned way. So there's a lot on that. There's material on things like page speed and uh, core web vitals. Yes. There are uh, three different metrics and core web vitals. That's a, a, a Google innovation that's uh, coming out of Google. They want you to you know, have a, a, a fast loading website. Yep. And uh, that relates to what they call their page experience update. So there's material on that. There's material on the helpful content update, and that's actually a series of updates. They want to ensure that people are not creating a huge raft of content using LMs, AI, that will fill the internet with a bunch of cruft, you know, things that are not really that valuable or are not properly fact-checked. There's already lots of issues with AI creating uh, and, and just making up facts references, studies, and that sort of thing. So if you're putting out AI material as if it's handcrafted, yeah. you, you could end up getting hit by the helpful content updates or by other algorithmic adjustments from Google or a manual penalty even. So you got to, you got to keep up with the times. Yeah. And you know, there's a few things you mentioned again, I'm, I'm getting off of the order of my questioning here that I've had prepared, but there's a few things you mentioned that I've seen, you know, immediate impact. I mean, we've had a couple of websites that for whatever reason got really slow. They fell off the, you know, the core web core vitals, you know, threshold and just immediately started, you know, started seeing uh, results tank when, you know, you fix them and they come back. I mean, so there's no debating that that's a, a ranking factor, is there? So yeah, maybe let's actually sometimes less is more. Yeah, so yeah. there's this this t tactic or this approach in SEO called content pruning, which means <laughs> you actually <laughs> take old obsolete content off of your website or at least yeah. no index it so it's not part of Google's search index anymore and that can actually help your overall website uh, perform better in the search results. Yeah. We had a, like a 2000 page site that we did just that to 1400 pages and immediately lifted their results. Cause they had a lot of stuff on there that just was probably just not relevant anymore to, to the reader. So let's talk about maybe if we can categorize, what are some of the, what are some of the core tactics that are still proving effective in 2024? Yeah. So it's important to understand that the, the tried and true techniques and tactics of SEO still apply in terms of identifying good keywords, topics that resonate or, or uh, relate to your audience. So we don't want to lose track of, of these tried and true things, optimizing 
title tags and, and, and the body copy and all that sort of stuff, doing proper keyword research, optimizing the technical kind of underpinnings of your website, doing all the configuration of your web server and so forth using like Yoast SEO plugin for WordPress. These sorts of things are, are still applicable. Right. But now with the advent of AI, we need to find ways to differentiate your website to make it seem like it's handcrafted, it's uh, fact-checked, it is uh, authoritative and trustworthy. So there's this acronym uh, from uh, Google Quality Rater Guidelines. Uh, it's EAT. It used to be EAT. This is a Google acronym, and it stands for uh, right. Experience, Expertise, Authoritativeness, and Trustworthiness. And AI does not have any experience. It cannot write about its experiences learning how to downhill ski or how to basket weave or how to, I don't know, train for an Olympic sport. So that's where the experience of a human really differentiates. And if you can prove that to an algorithm at Google, that's going to be very important. So it's not just about showing your credentials uh, of, you know, the different degrees, diplomas that you've earned and all that, but actually yeah. having the, the experience displayed in a way that looks super legit. It's, it's almost like you're, you're going to look super credible and, and, and this idea of being super credible, I, I'm going to steal a page from uh, Peter Diamandis's playbook. And that is that when he announced the X prize, he did not just, and it's a $10 million purse, right? So the winning team would get $10 million. Well, guess what? He didn't have the money. <laughs> so he announced it without the funding, but he had super credibility because he had on stage with him making the announcement, multiple NASA astronauts and the former deputy director of NASA. I, it was super credible. Nobody asked him, do you have the money? <laughs> so for mm -hmm. years, he didn't have the money until finally <laughs> he found the, the donor, the patron. So if you can show yourself as super credible to an AI and a human visitors and do that in a way that it doesn't look like you're being braggadocious, braggadocious, whatever, that's really right. the winning formula. I mean, just from a practical like business standpoint, would you say things like case studies of, you know, real life examples of, you know, doing the work that you're describing or even FAQs? I mean, things like that, does that add another level of experience yeah, potentially? Yeah. I would say if you can provide, let's say a testimonial, that's not just a written testimonial with per a person's first name and the first initial of the last name, yeah. but you actually have all their details, their full name, their title, their company, their location, you have a video of them, you have a headshot of them, that looks really quite credible. And, and if you can even better yes. get them to talk about what didn't work or why they almost didn't sign up with your service or, or buy your product, that's really quite hmm. compelling. So if, anytime that you can you know, augment your your claims and your assumptions with hard data and with real world examples, screenshots, charts, graphs, stuff that, that helps build your case and substantiate your claims, you're going to be in much better shape. You know what I think is always funny is, you know, over the years, what you just mentioned, you know, that's a, that's how you are more credible to a potential buyer, you know, we're even without right. search. I mean, that just comes to your website, sees the data, sees the proof, right? And it just feels like with every change in SEO or optimization techniques, it's really just getting it closer to like, what would be good for a human period, right? That's right. Yeah. But, uh, you know, on top of that, you, you, you have <laughs> considerations now that you are writing for AIs as well as for humans. You're not going to write primarily for an mm. AI. You're not going to try and, and keyword stuff your article, I hope. <laughs> That's been done in the past and it ne it's never worked well <laughs> and it won't well, well work in the future. But if you are keeping in mind a core audience of AIs as an audience reading your, your you know, quote unquote, reading your article, 
I think you're going to end up with a better outcome. So that includes things like how do I interlink these different pages together? How do I lead people on a story arc or a, a hero's journey? Because I'm leading the AI through that hero's journey too. So you mentioned AI's you know, reading and playing a part in search. So this might be a good time to ask about the whole concept of generative search and how that's going to impact probably two things, not only SEO tactics, but certainly yep, search behavior. That's right. So if you go to search generative experience, SGE from Google, and you start asking it questions, you can get some misinformation from it, just like with any AI, because remember, we have hallucinations. Those are not going to go away in the future. Those issues of, it's a, essentially an autocomplete. It's a, uh, an autocomplete on steroids. What's the next word? What's the next word? What's the next word? <laughs> and if it doesn't have an answer in, you know, ready and available, it will just make it up. So there's going to be a lot of, you know, fact checking and gatekeeping to make sure that wrong information isn't served up, especially when it relates to financial matters or with medical advice or anything like that. So I don't, I personally don't anticipate a uh, search generative experience being the prime time kind of uh, answer engine that people have been touting it to be because of those risks. I mean, think of the liability for Google if it tells you yeah. to take some sort of pharmaceutical yeah. and there's a contraindication or some sort of side effect. <laughs> You know, lawsuits yeah, will abound. Yeah. So I think that it will be more of an add-on yeah, feature yeah. for who knows how many months or even years. But I do see it as the future. And we'll be talking to our computers and our devices more than we'll be looking at them, I, I think, in the future. So it'll be like Star Trek, you know, yeah. hey, computer, blah, 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 blah. And if <laughs> your website has that future in mind when you're creating content, then you're going to be in a much better position. You're going to lead competitors when they're just writing for today. You know, the Wayne Gretzky quote, skate to where the puck is going to be, not where the puck is at. Yeah, yeah. So you led really right into my next question. We've been talking about voice search probably since Siri came around. So where do we stand in voice search? You just talked about talking to our computers more than, than viewing them. So where where do we stand today in that? What do we need to be prepared for? Because again, it's one of those things I feel like we've been talking about for 10 years yeah. and well, we're still talking about it. It's still coming when, you know, you have a result that is less than <laughs> awesome when you're asking, for example, your Amazon device. I'm not going to say the word. It begins with an A and, and she's listening right now for its, the, its wake word. And it's going to start chiming in on this conversation. So that device, when you ask it simple questions that... Google would just nail on the first try and it completely gets it a hundred percent wrong or just, yeah. you know, it doesn't give you any answer whatsoever and say, I, I don't know the answer to your question. That's frustrating. And it makes people just not want to even try yeah. this. There will be a tipping point though, where you get much more than just uh, a, a, or a recipe mm -hmm. or a, a timer from your Amazon echo. And that is the point, that tipping point is where this will completely take off. And if you are not prepared for that, you're going to be chasing after a train that's left the station. So plan on this being an eventuality because it is an eventuality. It's just a matter of the timing. So talk a little bit about, I know you cover local uh, search. Obviously, there are a lot of businesses that they're only trying to people in their town find them. So what are some new realities, if you will, in, in that kind of business that's looking, the remodeling contractor, you know, that just wants people to find him? Yeah, there's been a lot of innovations with local search. And, you know, if you're familiar with, with that world, there's this kind of a blending of paid search and local SEO with LSA. Yeah, I'll say local search ads. You've got these <laughs> tools that I, I just can't imagine not using them for local SEO, like local Falcon, which will show your mm -hmm. position in uh, Google Maps results, you know, or in, in the three pack, the local pack and the Google results. If you are, let's say even 10 miles away from your current location, your headquarters, 
your local results could be markedly different. And how are you going to know without, you know, VPNs yeah. Yeah. Or, or traveling around town and doing searches from your mobile phone? You need to use a tool like Local Falcon. It will show you a, a grid of whether you're in the top three positions and what position you're at. And it's kind of like a heat map sort of thing and across a whole uh, metro area. So you can see, oh, I'm really strong in this part of town, but not at, at like I'm invisible in this other part of town. Maybe I need to to start up a like a, a satellite office, you know, by, by appointment only, not a sketchy thing like a UPS store location, but a real yeah. legit office there. And you don't have to pay a fortune for that. It might be you know under a thousand dollars a month for a uh, an office yeah. that has signage that is really a real office not a p.o box and that could make a world of difference and now you've got two locations and now you're really strong in that other part of town that you were invisible for how are you going to know this and track this without a tool like local falcon so yeah you you, you need different tools yeah. and and strategies for local search than just regular seo you said 10 miles, you know, I've seen yeah, half a mile, you know, in a very competitive, like a salon, you know, hair salon or something where there's one on every corner, really geographic proximity is tough. You mentioned tools like local Falcon. What are some AI tools that are, that people who business people who are trying to optimize their content, create new content, be more efficient in creating content. What are your favorite current tools? I know tomorrow I'll ask you and it'll change, but what well, are they I'm today? I'm going to start with the tried and true obvious uh, AI tools, and that would be ChatGPT and Claude, right. which I would think right. I consider to be its its big rival or arch, arch enemy. <laughs> Anthropic is the creator of, of Claude and OpenAI is the creator of mm -hmm. ChatGPT and some of the folks, some of the top leadership at OpenAI left and, and started Anthropic and created this competing Claude AI tool. And it's amazing. It's got 100,000, so far, at this yeah. point in time, 100,000 uh, token limit on input, meaning that you could upload an entire book and have it use that as part of your input. So you could upload, let's say, a manifesto, you know, or you, you're, how you... Yeah think and operate in the world and your values and, and philosophy on life and business or whatever for your industry. You have that manifesto, you upload that and you ask Claude or ChatGPT questions like, based on your understanding of my company and my brand from this uploaded manifesto, come up with a voice and tone guideline for me. Come up with a social media strategy yes. for yes. me. Come up yes. with an editorial calendar for my blog for me. And it will do incredibly well. And that is so much yeah. better than just typing in a prompt. I mean, yeah, you get sophisticated with prompts yeah. and, and you know do your prompt engineering, but why not upload something that's really representative of your company, your brand, your unique differentiating you know, yeah. kind of point of difference. And then you let the AI come up with all sorts of different things, social media posts and draft blog articles and strategy documents and, and position state, positioning statements and so forth based on its understanding of you from that kind of cornerstone piece of content that you've uploaded. So there's that. There's using super prompts, which are prompts, you know, the input that you type in, it's on steroids because everything has been thought through and you don't have to think th through all these things yourself. You don't have to come up with like, please ignore all prior prompts because I want it to, you know, not be influenced by a whole series of previous questions that I asked. I, I want uh, it to create, a, let's say, a table, a markdown table. So it's nice, uh, pretty formatted table. I want it to not display any kind of narration or explanation around why it's in, it's outputting uh, particular things. Just want. Yeah, yeah. the output file of, you know, whatever my editorial calendar is that I, I don't want to explain its thinking as it's going along. So all these things baked into what's called a super prompt, which might be 250 words of stuff. If you mm -hmm. can paste somebody's yeah. super prompt, yeah. whether it's on 
uh, creating a keyword strategy or on even creating other super prompts or on uh, writing a blog post or something, you are going to end up with such better output because the old adage from the programmer days of garbage in, garbage out still applies. If you write a lousy prompt, you will get lousy output. So that's the difference maker right there. And you don't have to go to all the fancy new tools, which may not exist in six months. They might go out of business. You know, so if you got a podcast, yeah. you could be using yeah. let's say yeah. cap show or cast magic or decipher without, you know, it's like decipher without the E <laughs> at the end. <laughs> so it's just R without ER. So these decipher tools are R, awesome. Right, and yeah. who knows which ones yeah. will exist in six months from now. Chat GPT, that'll exist. Claude will exist. Google Bard will exist. Yeah, so yeah. you get masterful yeah. at those. Wow. You know, you, you're going to be definitely leapfrogging your com- competitors. Yeah. Awesome advice. Well, Stefan, I appreciate you taking a moment to stop by the Duct Tape Marketing Podcast. Is there somewhere you'd invite people to connect with you, learn about your work, obviously pick up a copy of the latest yeah, edition yeah. of the In Art fact, of SEO? If, let's say, if you know, hand, handful. I've got, you know, the publisher is O'Reilly. And so I can't just give away copies of the book just ad infinitum, but I did get permission from my publisher to give away a handful of copies. So if somebody wants to email me at stephanspencer.com and just say they, they want to kind of put themselves into the lottery for a free Art of SEO fourth edition digital copy, I'll send uh, some of them. And and actually, everyone can get a copy of Google Power Search, which is in its third edition, which I do have 100% of the rights of. So I can send that to everybody who who sends an inquiry. My my personal website, stephanspencer.com and netconcepts.com is my agency. And you mentioned at the beginning, my two podcast shows, Marketing Speak. Which, which you've been on, John, marketingspeak.com, and then Get Yourself Optimized, which is at getyourselfoptimized.com. Not an SEO podcast. It may sound like one, but it's actually personal development. <laughs> nice. Awesome. 